and shout hallelujah. And if you know, I'm gonna borrow that from a uh, bishop. Uh, what's that, bish that uh, bishop? Uh, 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 Gideon's bishop name. What's his name? Bishop Kayembe. Bishop Kayembe. I borrow that from Bishop Kayembe because I've learned to collect. The collective this and that and that for every man of God that I meet. Whatever I like about them, I pick it up. I say there's a blessing in this house. And if you know that that blessing belongs to you, if you know that that blessing belongs to you, I ask you now.
Alléluia 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 Jesus, we thank you for your presence that's already here to heal, to deliver, to minister. Because you said in your word that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in their midst. We thank you that you are here. We thank you that your angels are here. We thank you for the power to deliver. We thank you for the anointing to deliver, the anointing to minister, the anointing to receive. We thank you for the anointing to receive. We thank you for the anointing to receive. Father, I pray for your children today that no soul that is here today will live the same way they come. They will not live the same way you come. I say to you, we will not live the same way you come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will not live here the same way you came in. I guarantee that. I guarantee that. That if you believe the Lord, if you believe the Lord, if you believe his prophets, that you will not live here the same way you came. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I'm bringing you good news. Je vous amène une bonne Amen. Nouvelle. Because for those that are in Christ Jesus, there's no bad news. I say for those that are in Christ Jesus, there's no bad news. I bring you the good news. The good news about Jesus. The, bad, the good news about Jesus. And what he has accomplished on the cross for you. I bring you that good news. I know some of you are saying, well, I've had it before. But if you, well, if you have had it before, hear it again. And again. And again. And again. Until it gets into your mind. Until it gets into your psychic. Until you don't know how to think any different. But according to the word of God. But according to the word of God. In Jesus. Jesus name. Au nom de Jésus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Today we're going to talk about your new identity. Nous Amen. De ta we're going to talk about who you are. Nous de qui tu es. Because Parce que 
an ego that doesn't know that an, he's an ego. An ego and he's messing ego. around with chicken. The things that prey on chicken. The, the things that eat chicken. The what? We begin to eat the ego. Even though these things were created for ego as a food. But because, because, but because the egos have been ego hanging around with chicken so long and they not realize that he's an ego. The things that kill chicken. The things that eat chicken. We begin to eat the ego. Amen. For example, there are python, there are little pythons yeah, piton, where I grew up in Nigeria. They used to eat chicken for food. They used to eat chicken for food. Amen. But these little pythons, the ego can, eat, can you know, scoop for all the way from the mountain, all the way from the tree, and scoop down and eat them. The ego eat them for food. But these things eat chicken. But if that ego was hanging around with the chickens, that python might as well just eat him. Amen. Because that ego didn't realize who he was. Today we're going to talk about who you are in Christ. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ. I said we're going to talk about Jesus Christ and who you are in him. And who you are in him. Because whoever Christ is, whatever Christ is, whatever he possess, whatever he possess, because you are in him, I say because you are in him, that is why when you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, especially the New Testament, it talks about in him, you in him, in Christ, in Christ, what does it mean that you are in Christ? What does it mean that you are in Christ? It means that you have become a partaker of Christ, that you have become a partaker of Christ, that everything that belongs to him, belongs to you. His power belongs to you. His anointing belongs to you. His riches belongs to you. His wealth belongs to you. His holiness belongs to you. His righteousness belongs to you. His purity belongs to you. His wisdom belongs to you. That is the gospel. I say that is the gospel. The meaning of the word gospel is the good news. It is good news. And that's why I bring to you today the good news about Jesus. The good news about Jesus. And what he has done for you on the cross. What he has accomplished for you on the cross. If you will believe it. If you will meditate on it. If you will go home and study your Bible. And study the Bible again. Again and again. Again and again. Again and again. Until you begin to believe it. Until you begin to confess it. Until you begin to confess it. We have a saying in this house. That your confession has become your possession. possession. But we don't know the half of it. We don't know the half of it. That your confession has become your possession. You are not confessing things that doesn't exist. You are confessing things that has already existed in the spirit. They already existed in the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. You already existed in the spirit. You have been perfected. You have been perfected in the spirit. You have been made holy in the spirit. You are righteous. In the spirit, you know all things. In the spirit, you know all things. In the spirit, you know all things. In the spirit, you are. You are. As Jesus is. In the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, you know all things. In the spirit, you are sanctified. In the spirit, you are complete. The Bible says you are complete. You are nothing. In the spirit, you are complete. The Bible says you are complete. 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 You in the heavenly places, in the as it is written in the, the book of Ephesians, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit, you have everything. You have everything. You have, you have been blessed. 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 If you knew it before, you say iron sharpens iron. I'm just sharpening you up. If you don't know it before, I'm delivering the good news for the first time to you. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are in Christ Jesus, I'm delivering the good news for the first time to you. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are in Christ Jesus, that is why we are delivering the good news for the first time to you. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are in Christ Jesus, that is why we are delivering the good news for the first time to you. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are in Christ Jesus, that is why we are delivering the good news for the first time to you. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are in Christ Jesus, that is why
praises. You, you are responsible to, respond to, to God. It should be nothing but praises. It should be nothing but praises. That is why those who know me, those who have seen me minister, they know that I sing a lot. I praise a lot. I love praise and worship. 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 I If anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. This word new creation, it means a new species of being that has never existed before. He said, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. You are a new creation. The old things have passed away. He said, old things have passed away. What are those old things? Those old things that has passed away. Sicknesses has passed away. I say sickness has passed away. Shame has passed away. Your shame has passed away because you're a new creation. Your shame that followed you because of the family that you are born in has passed away. Your sickness that runs in your family. Your sickness that runs in your family has passed away. It has passed away. It has passed away. The shame that runs in your family has passed away. Your sickness that runs in your family has passed away. Your bad life that runs in your family. The bad things that runs in your family has passed away. Some pass away. The barrenness that runs in your family it has passed away. Some pass away. Because the Bible says that none shall be barren. That none shall be barren among them. Even among their lifestyle, that none shall be barren. He's talking about those who are in Christ Jesus. He's talking about those who are in Christ Jesus. They don't shall be barren. The Bible is telling you, the word of God is telling you, that if you're in Christ Jesus, you're a new creation. That the curses, 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 curses,
I said, 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 I said,
supposed to desire this world. Tu es supposé désirer. Désirer comme la nourriture. Desire his word. Désire sa parole. Désire sa parole. Mange sa parole. Digeste sa parole. Observe sa parole. Et tu se deviendras ce que la parole dit que tu deviendras. Les gens commenceront à voir la gloire de Dieu manifester dans ta vie. Au nom de Jésus. That's why I tell people that around me. That like you have to spend both quantity and quality time in the Word of God. I say quantity and quality time in the Word of God. Because what God is trying to do in you is to build Himself up in your soulish realm. To build Himself up in your soul. So that what you have become in the Spirit, what He has made you in the Spirit, your soul will begin to come in thanks with that. We we'll begin to talk like that. Begin to act like that. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go back to chapter 16. I mean verse 16, I'm sorry. He said, therefore, we are still in 2 Corinthians 5, 16. He says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. What is he talking about? What is the Bible talking about? That we no more regard some people according to the flesh. It means the person that is sitting next to you, that you think you know, that you think you have seen. He said, no, he said don't judge them according to what you are seeing, according to what you are seeing, according to what you are seeing. According to what you are Selon ce que tu Begin vois, to judge them commence à le juger to who they are. selon qui ils sont in spirit, en esprit. In the spirit. En esprit. He's telling you Il te dit to begin to look at yourself, commence à te regarder à toi-même. To pas selon ce que tu in es flesh, dans la chair. Not according to who you pas selon ce que tu in es flesh, dans la chair. Not according to the sickness pas selon la maladie body, que tu vois sur ton not corps. According to the emptiness pas selon le vide que tu vois dans ton corps. Pas selon ce que tu as dans ton caractère. Not even according to your character. Pas selon son caractère. You begin to see yourself like that. Begin to see who you are in the spirit. Because in the spirit, he has made you holy. In the spirit, he has made you righteous. In the spirit, he has made you righteous. He has made you holy. He has made you righteous. 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 He has je dis comme un lion. Je dis comme un lion. Il commence à te voir comme cela. Pense à toi comme cela. On dit mets cette pensée en toi. Que cette pensée soit en toi. Quand tu te vois comme cela, et tu parles comme cela, alors soudainement, tu vas te manifester par la caractère de justice. C'est comme cela que tu possèdes. Tu as bien hearing. Ils vont te dire, tu dois changer ton caractère. Tu dois changer ton comportement. Tu dois changer comment tu agis. Que ton caractère soit wrong. That your character made you not qualify. That because of your character you're not qualified. But I'm here to tell you that you begin to begin to what? Inherit. Inherit through your belief and your confession. The characters of Christ. Because sometimes we think that the only thing that we inherit from God, that the only thing that we should ask God for is material things. But part of what Jesus has given you is himself. That is why in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, he says to Abraham, I am, you are exceedingly, you are exceedingly great reward. As a great reward. In the book, in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 1 30, 1 verse 30, he said that Christ has been made, Christ has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, redemption, sanctification. It means, it simply means that if you are in Christ Jesus, that you are born of God, that God is your good character, that Christ has become your good character. Christ has become your holiness. Christ has become your wisdom. That is why the Bible says that you know all things. But for you to inherit this things, for you to walk in this things, for you to manifest this things, you have to get 
into the word. Get that word in your heart and begin to confess it. Begin to confess I'm righteous. Begin to confess I'm righteous. Even when you are acting wrong, begin to confess I'm righteous. Even when you are acting not holy, when you are acting not so holy, when your characters are not so holy, begin to say I am holy. Begin to confess I am holy. When you begin to confess it, the power of the indwelling spirit, the power of the indwelling Christ will begin to manifest through you. We begin to manifest through you. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, people will begin to see holy character. They will begin to see righteous character being manifested in you. That is why he's saying to recognize no man after the flesh. After the flesh. What is flesh? Flesh is everything that you are without Christ. That is flesh. When the Bible talks about flesh, it's talking about everything that is in you without Christ. That is why Apostle Paul made a statement. He said, for I perceive in me, for I perceive in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good in. Dwelleth no good in. And at the end of Romans, chapter 7, chapter 7, he said, O wretched man that I am, O oh, pitiable man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? But I, in, in, in Romans 8, he said, Thank God. He said, Thank God. He said, Thank God, he said, Thank God that through Jesus Christ I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I'm here to tell you that the good news is through Jesus Christ, you are not a smoker that people call you. You are not a drunkard that people call you. You are not a fornicator that people call you. If you are in Christ Jesus, Jesus. You are not the adulterer that people call you. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not the gossiper that people call you. In Christ Jesus, even if you are still struggling, even if you are struggling with those things, I'm here to tell you how to begin to take possession. How to begin to take possession of the indwelling Christ, the characters of indwelling Christ, the riches of indwelling Christ that dwells in your spirit. How to take possession of it. Because even though you may look at yourself and you are not pleased with yourself, not of us is pleased with ourselves. When you begin to look at your flesh, you are not pleased with ourselves. You are not pleased with your thoughts. You are not pleased with the thoughts that go through your mind. But begin to what? Take the mind of Christ. Begin to claim the mind of Christ as your own mind. Begin to ask the indwelling Christ. Ask the indwelling Christ to manifest his holiness. Manifest his righteousness. Manifest his purity through your soul. Through your soul. And all of a sudden, people who know you People who see you, we begin to look at you, and we begin to say, ah, ah, there's something different about this brother, something different about his sister. He's not who he used to be. He's not who he used to be. He's not who he used to be. He used to drink with us. He used to smoke with us. He used to go around chasing women with us. He used to talk nonsense with us. But now, but now, I can see something, something different, something different. They begin to see the holiness. They begin to see the righteousness of God through you that will cause them, that will cause them to ask you, where do you go to church? Who is your God? What do you serve? That is the whole purpose. That is the whole purpose. That is why the Bible said that God is using us, using us as his children to reconcile the whole world to himself. That God is using us to reconcile the whole world to himself. But they're not going to believe. They're not going to believe if they don't see you manifesting, manifesting those characters of Christ. Those characters of Christ. They are not going to believe if they don't see you manifesting the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that the good news, the good news, the good news, the good news, the good news is through your belief to your faith and your confession in dwelling Christ, the indwelling Christ in you will begin to manifest. We begin to manifest. Big people will begin to see the holiness of God through you, and that will cause them to glorify your God in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Glory. Glory. Let us go to the book of John. 15, verse 4 and 5. The book of the Apostle of John. Forever, O oh Lord, 
Thy word is settled in heaven. It is settled. It is settled forever. Ah, oh Lord. Thy word is settled in heaven. It is settled. It is settled for. That song says the word of God is settled in heaven. But God has given you the power. I say God has given you the power to make sure that his word concerning you that is settled in heaven is also settled in your life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are talking about the fact that you have been uprooted from your family tree and you have been planted I say you have been planted into a different tree and the name of that tree is righteousness the name of that tree is holiness the name of that tree is Judah which means praise the name of that tree is wisdom the name of that tree is healed the name of that tree is delivered the name of that tree is saved the name of that tree is riches. The name of that tree is honor. The name of that tree is light. The name of that tree is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everything I'm telling you, I'm proving that with the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of John 15, verse, starting from verse 4, he says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch, listen to that. He said, As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless he abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much what? fruit. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. What is Jesus doing here? He's giving you a picture. I say he's giving you a picture. I don't have a tree here, but if I have three here, I'll give you a picture of what he's saying. He's saying, I am like a tree, and you are the branches. Look at my fingers like the branches. He said, Jesus is the tree, and you are the branches. And if you're abiding in him as one of the branches, how does branch bear fruit? The branch gets its nutrients from the tree. That means if you're abiding in Christ, if you're abiding in Christ, everything that is in him as the vine will begin to flow in you, will begin to flow out of you as the branch. I say as the branch. So when you look around your life, if you look around your life and you are not seeing those fruits, and you are not seeing those fruits, I'm encouraging you today. I'm encouraging you today. Learn how to abide in him. Learn how to abide in him. Learn how to abide in him. How do you abide in him? 
How do I abide in him? It's through his word. I say through his word. Through meditating on his word. When you are meditating on his word, when you are reading his word, when you are thinking of his word, you are abiding in him. And if you stay abiding in him, if you stay put, if you stay put, I say if you stay put, a time will come. A time will come when you will begin to bear fruit. What are those fruits? They are righteousness. They are holiness. They are peace. They are joy. They are joy. They are peace. It tells you what the fruit is. It tells you what the fruit is. In the book of, uh, in the book of what is that? Galatians. Is that Galatians 5.21? It tells you what the fruits are. They are gentleness. People will begin to see you. They will say, ah, he's more tender. She's more tender. She's more loving. She's more loving. She's kinder. She's more gentle. She's, she's more at peace. She's more at peace. She's more at peace. She's loving more now. She's loving more now. She's full of love. She's full of love. But here I'm telling you to learn how to abide. How long how to abide? Learn how to abide in Christ through his word. Through his word. Learn how to stay in the branch. To stay in the branch. To stay in the branch. So that people will begin to see Christ. To begin to see Christ manifesting through you. Manifesting in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Look at what Jeremiah. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. Look at the reward of those that are abiding in Christ. Go to Jeremiah 17. I told you I'm here to bring you the good news. The good news is that. I say the good news is that. You don't have to struggle anymore. You don't have to struggle anymore. To become holy. You don't have to struggle anymore. To become pure. You don't have to struggle anymore. Begin to learn. How to rest. How to rest. In the finished work. In the finished work of the cross. When you begin to rest in him. What does it mean to rest in him? It means simply begin to believe. Believe and confess. Believe and confess. And hold fast to your confession. Does, am I telling you that devil will not challenge you? I'm not here to tell you that devil will not challenge you. I'm not here to tell you that demons from your old village that they will not try to challenge you. I'm not trying here to tell you that thing that held you down, that thing that held you down as a result of the family that you were born into. I'm not here to tell you that those things will not challenge you. I'm here to tell you they are guaranteed to challenge you. It's guaranteed that they will challenge you. It's guaranteed that they will come after you. I'm here not here to tell you that that, that sickness, that that sickness that was passed on to you all the way from your forefathers because of your bloodline that they will not try to rear their ugly head to challenge you. That's not what I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you that according to the word of God, the word of God says in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 54, he says, surely that they shall gather. He says, for sure they shall gather. He says, for sure they shall gather. He says, for sure they shall gather. He says, sure, sure those sickness they shall gather. That that disease shall gather. That that reproach that they shall gather. That that shame shall gather. That short life they shall gather to threaten you. But I'm here to tell you what the Bible says. He says that as many as there that gather against you, he said that they shall fall. He said that they shall fall for your sake because your righteousness is of him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The book of Jeremiah 17. Verse 7. He said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Who is he talking about? He's talking about me and you. What does he mean to trust in the Lord? To trust in the Lord is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So you might as well read this as saying, 
Blessed are those who are in Christ Jesus. Who stay in Christ Jesus. Who continue to stay in Christ Jesus. He said, blessed are them. It means to be envied. That word blessed can be translated. And it was translated in some translation of the Bible. He said to be envied. It means people will envy you. He said to be envied are you. He said to be envied are you. Who trust in Christ Jesus. Amen. He said blessed is the man or woman who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree. He said you shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear for, for when it comes. But its leaf will be green and will be anxious in the year of drought. Now we cease from yielding fruit. He said, blessed are you. To be envied are you. Who has put your faith in Christ Jesus. Who have received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He said, blessed are you. Be, to be envied are you. Because you shall be like a tree. A tree that is planted by the rivers of the water. Just use your imagination. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. And imagine a tree. A tree that is planted by the rivers. He said, did not say just river, but rivers. It means that the water is always flowing because every tree needs water. Every tree needs water in order to receive nutrients from the soil that will cause it to bear fruit. He said that you are like that. The Bible is comparing you to like that. That if you are planted by a tree, a tree that is planted by the rivers of the water, it doesn't matter whether there's a drought it doesn't matter whether there's a hammer time. It doesn't matter whether there's winter. It doesn't matter there's winter. It doesn't matter whether there's drought. It doesn't matter whether there's famine. It does not matter whether there's dry season. We are, you know what we call dry season in Africa? When it stops raining. When it stops raining, everything dries out. Everything dries out. All the trees dries out. But the Bible is telling you, the word of God is telling you that if you are in Christ Jesus, that, 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 that if you are in Christ Jesus, that even when those dry season comes, it will come to the rest of the world. If you when those famine comes, it will affect the rest of the world. That when those droughts come, it will affect the rest of the world. But it will not affect you. Because you are not receiving. I say you are not receiving. You are nutrients from them. You are not receiving. You are not receiving. You are food from them. You are receiving from your food. From the water. Because that tree is receiving its fruit. It's receiving its nutrients from the water where it's planted. So are you. I'm here to tell you that the good news is that the same thing applies to you. That if you are in Christ Jesus, you are no more receiving your substance. You are not receiving your substance from the world. From the world. So when their finances are dry, when sicknesses is affecting them, it should not affect you because you are not receiving from them. If they are not your supplier, God has become your supplier. God has become your supplier. And in God, there's never a drought. In God, there's never a drought. There's never lack. In God, there's never lack of water. In God, there's never lack of food. In God, there's never lack of health. He's the source of all things. He's the source of all things. That's why he says to you that I have become you are exceedingly great reward. He said that to Abraham. But because you are the seed of Abraham, because you are the seed of Abraham, it applies to you too. He has become he has become your exceedingly great word. He has become your supplier. He has become your healing. He has become your healing. He has become your healer. He has become your riches. He has become your deliverer. He has become your deliverance. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You will say after me. Stand up. Thank you, Jesus. You say after me. Say after me. Nous allons répéter après lui. Say anything. 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 Any fruit. Any fruit that is in my life. That is in my life. That is not of God. That is not of God. That is not of God. You know the Bible says that life and death is in the power of your tongue. Hallelujah. You say that what? Life and death is in the power of what? Your tongue. 
and Jesus says, I am the resurrection, I am the life. That means that what? God is what? In your mouth. Amen? That means what? That God is in your mouth. The, what it says, the power of life and death is in your tongue because God knows that there are things that you needed to kill in your life. And he has given you what? The power through your tongue to kill those things that needed to be killed. Amen. And to give life to those things that needed to be given life. Amen. Amen? He has finished his work. That's why he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Amen. Until his enemies are put under his word. Full stool. But guess who? He has given that job to put his enemies under his foot too. It's us. What is his foot, foot too? Where is his foot? We are his foot because what? We are the rest of his body. A man's foot. Amen? A, 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 a man's rest of the body. I mean, you know, you, if you're head, you head or something, I mean, the rest of the body is under you, what? Right? The rest of your body is what? Under you. That means your foot, anything that is under your foot is under the rest of the body. He said, until his enemy what, become his foot stool. And we are the one who has been committed, who have been given that mission to put all his enemies what, under his foot stool. That means under us. That means under us. That there are every sickness, every disease, every reproach, every attackers of your life, every attackers of your life, Fire. attackers of your destiny, 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 Fire. every generational causes, Fire. generational causes Fire. that is still following you around, Fire. that is following you around, Fire. that is following you around, Fire. that is following you around, Fire. every attackers, Fire. attackers of your children, Fire. attackers of your children, Fire. every demons, Fire. every demons, Fire. principalities, Fire. powers, Fire. witchcrafts, Fire. wizards, Fire. occultic power Fire. that is challenging your life, Fire. that is challenging my life, Fire. that is challenging your destiny, Fire. that's challenging your destiny, Fire. challenging your destiny, Fire. challenging your calling, Fire. challenging your ministry, Fire. challenging your health, Fire. challenging your health, Fire. generational causes Fire. that is following you Fire. from your father's house, Fire. from your mother's house, Fire. that will not let you go, Fire. that will not let you go, Fire. that determine, Fire. that determine Fire. that they have position of you, Fire. that determine Fire. that they will follow you, Fire. that they will follow you, Fire. whatever they are, Fire. whatever they are hiding, Fire. every comfort zone, Fire. every comfort zone Fire. that they are using Fire. to attack you, Fire. they attack you, Fire. they attack you, Fire. they attack you. Fire. Every powers, Fire. powers of the enemy, Fire. powers of the enemy, Fire. powers for occultic, occultic kingdom, Fire. powers, uh, Fire. principalities, Fire. powers, uh, Fire. principalities, occultic, occultic powers Fire. that are challenging you. Fire. Every witch is, every witch is that challenging your life, Fire. that challenging your life, Fire. that challenging your life, Fire. that challenging your life. Fire. Every sickness Fire. in your body, Fire. in your womb, Fire. every barrenness, Fire. every barrenness Fire. that is threatening Fire. your conception, Fire. your conception. Fire. Every demon Fire. that is bringing. Fire. Sickness, Fire. disease, Fire. reproaches Fire. into your life, Fire. into your life, Fire. wherever they are. Fire. Every comfort zone Fire. that they are sitting Fire. to challenge you. Fire. Every comfort zone Fire. that they are sitting Fire. to challenge your life, Fire. to challenge your marriage, Fire. to challenge your marriage. Fire. Powers Fire. that have been dispersed, Fire. that have been released Fire. to challenge your family, Fire. to challenge your marriage, Fire. to challenge your health, Fire. to challenge your health. Fire. Wherever they are, Fire. wherever they are, Fire. wherever they are hiding, Fire. wherever they are hiding, Fire. wherever they are hiding Fire. in your life, Fire. in my life. In the life of this church, Fire. every power Fire. that challenging Fire. your progress, Fire. your progress, Fire. your progress, Fire. The attackers Fire. of your finances, Fire. of your finances, Fire. of your finances, Fire. of your business, Fire. of your business, Fire. of your business, Fire. attackers Fire. of your children, Fire. every spirit Fire. of rebellion, Fire. of rebellion Fire. that has been dispatched to work against Fire. against you and your children, Fire. against you and your children, Fire. every power, Fire. every power Fire. that has been released to scatter your marriage, Fire. to scatter your relationship. Fire. To scatter your return, wherever they are, wherever they are coming from, from the heavenly places, from the heavenly places, from the heavenly places, every ruler, every ruler of a courtly kingdom, of a courtly kingdom, that challenging you, challenging your children, challenging your children, challenging your standard in the Lord Jesus. Every power that challenges the glory of God in your life, every power that's attacking your mind, every power. Fire. Every oppressor, Fire. every oppressor Fire. that's oppressing you, Fire. oppressing your children, Fire. oppressing your marriage, Fire. oppressing your progress, Fire. oppressing your destiny, Fire. oppressing your children. Fire. In Jesus' name, Fire. somebody shout hallelujah. Glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Can I have your seat? Thank you.
What is the other identity that God has given you? As a, as a result of your accepting Jesus Christ. You know, some of us will think that Jesus came to this earth to start another religion, to start a church, to start Christianity. But I'm telling you, as good as that is, that's a better news. I said, that's a better news. That is not why Jesus came. I said, that is not why Jesus came. That is not why he came here. He did not come to start a religion. He did not start to come to start a Christianity as we know it. He came to establish a kingdom. I said, he came to establish a kingdom. He brought a kingdom. That is why when his disciples ask him, Ask him to teach them how to pray. What did he tell disciples? He didn't ask them to pray for another religion. He said, let thy word kingdom come. Our father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Isn't that what he prayed? Hallowed be thy name. He said, let thy kingdom he said, let thy kingdom and then again, he turned around and he told them, he said that the kingdom of God is what? In you. Amen? He brought a kingdom. A spiritual kingdom. A spiritual kingdom. With a purpose that those who belong to that kingdom. I say to those, that those who belong to that kingdom, when they begin to find out who they are, when they begin to find out who they are, they will begin to take the possessions of the kingdoms of this world, of the kingdoms of this world. Amen? He brought down a superior kingdom. A superior kingdom. That's why you have to be born again. That's why you needed to be born again. Because in your first birth, you were given birth into that kingdom, into satanic kingdom, into kingdom of darkness. But in your new birth, in your new birth, in your new birth, God translated you. You mean he translated you. He transformed you from that kingdom of darkness into a different kingdom, into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of life, into the kingdom of prosperity, into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of rule by wisdom, into the kingdom that is ruled by God, into a kingdom whose king is God himself. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Genesis. We're talking about who you are, the new you in Christ. The new you in Christ. I'm talking to those who are in Christ. I'm not talking because at the end of this, I'm not talking to those who are they're not sure whether they're in Christ or not. Today, today they are shouting hallelujah. Tomorrow they are consulting another God. The next day they are sending money in, in the village for somebody to go to the native doctor to find out something. I'm not talking to those of you because those of you are give an altar call if you want to come and give your life to Jesus Christ. You can do that. But I'm talking to those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who know who they are. Those who have been born again. Those who have been born by the incorruptible word of the word of God that abides forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Genesis chapter 1. Chapter 1, starting from verse 26. We're going to read 26 and 27. Who are you? I say, who are you? Amen. What I'm trying to do here today is to get you to see who you really are. Who God has really, really made you. And begin to take position of that. Amen. Because let me just say that for benefit of those who don't know. God is a spirit. Amen. God is what? It's a spirit. And so are you. You are a spirit living in a human body. What I'm trying to get you today, today is begin to identify yourself with who you are in the spirit. Amen. 
Because when you begin to realize who you are in the spirit, then those that flesh and his desire will no more have dominion over you. When you realize who you are in the spirit and begin to walk in the spirit, amen. When you begin to know who you are, begin to walk according to who you are in the spirit. But the problem is that we have not been taught on how to walk in the spirit. And what I'm teaching you today is what God has begun to teach me because I've been crying out to God. I'm just like you. I struggle with this. I struggle with that. And I know that these things are not God. I know I'm born of God. I know I don't want to be struggling with those things. I know I don't want to be thinking those thoughts. I don't want those thoughts dominating my thoughts anymore. But I have struggled in my own. Struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled. And struggled, and struggled. Until he came to a point where I started to cry out to God. I said, God, well, this is what your word says. This is what your word says. This is what your word says. But I'm not seeing any of that. I'm not seeing holiness manifest through my thoughts. Even though I'm trying as much as I can. I'm not seeing your purity manifest through my imaginations. Even though I try as much as I can. And this is what, what I'm teaching you is what God is teaching me. Amen. Amen. That's what God is teaching me. That often we've been taking position where we've been saying, oh, money come to me, all that coming. And those are part of those are part of it. But the root of it, the root of it, the, you know, we'll talk about the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not riches. It's not the riches. The blessing of Abraham is righteousness. The blessing of Abraham is righteousness. That is why the Bible says, seek you for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. When you begin to take possession of who you are in Christ, the gift of righteousness that God has given you, because it's a gift, you cannot earn it by yourself. It is a gift so that nobody should boast. It is a gift so that nobody will, stand, will be standing tall against the other one and saying like, hey, look at me, look at how holy I am and righteous I am. It is a gift because none of us can be honest by himself. That righteousness is a gift. I'm trying to tell you how to possess it, how to walk in it, so that all these other things, like houses and money and all that, will begin to follow you. Because when you take position of this one thing, this one thing, when you take position of this one thing, all the other stuff will begin to pursue you. All those other things will begin to pursue you. Because every promises that God has made in his word, for it belongs to the righteous. It belongs to the righteous. But I'm here to tell you, he has made you righteous. He said, he who knew no sin, he who knew no sin, was made a sin, so that you might be made the righteousness of God. You have been made righteous. Because begin to possess it by faith. Begin to possess it by faith. Let that be your first possession. And every other thing will begin to flee from you. The things that are not supposed to be in your life begin to flee. The things that are supposed to be in your life will begin to come. That is why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. What does it really mean to be righteous? It means that you have right standing with God. That God has credited, that God has credited his divine nature into your account because of what Jesus did on the cross. That God has credited his blessing, the blessing that Jesus deserved into your account because of what Jesus had did on the cross. Hallelujah. And through that, he has given you dominion. I say through that, he has given you dominion. He has made you like a king. Like a prince, like a princess, not like a princess, but as a princess, as a king over all creation, over all creation. That is why the Bible says that those who know their God, that they shall do exploit, do a great exploit in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 26, I mean, chapter 1, 26 and 27. He says, then God said, let us make man in our image. Let us what? Make man in our what? Image. And as I just told you, God is a spirit. If God said, let us make man according to our own image, that means God, he made you what? A spirit. And according to our what? Own likeness. For what purpose? 
For what purpose? He Who tells you for what purpose. He say, let them have what? Dominion, dominion over the fish of the sea. Let them have dominion what? Dominion over the fish of the sea. Whether they say they are mommy water or whatever, they, are, they become the fish of the sea. God has given you dominion what? Over them. If they sleep in the water overnight, God has given you dominion what? Over them. If they decide to go to inside the river and make that place their dwelling place, God has given you what? Dominion over them. If they, be in a, if they decided to become snake at night or whatever they decide to turn themselves into, God has been giving yourself what? Dominion over them. If they decide to become owl and be flying at night as a wish, God has given you dominion over them. Amen? This dominion does not come from man. It comes from what? God. And at the song we are singing, his word what? Is settled. When he says, I give you dominion, it is what? Settled. It is what? Settled. It is what? Settled. Well, I'm here to tell you, you no more have to cry about the witch that is harassing you. You no more have to be afraid of, the, of, of, of that woman sitting in the village, the foolish woman, old woman that is harassing you. Because God has given you what? Dominion what? Over them. He said, over the birds of the air, those that fly at night, if they decide to leave their body to fly at night, amen? amen. They are not flying on your behalf because <laughs> the Bible says that they shall fall for your sake. If they are flying up there, they shall fall for your sake. He says that over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So, verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female created them. Then God blessed them, and God said, be fruitful and what? Multiply in everything. I say in everything. God told him to be fruitful and multiply. That is a command. The God has commanded us. God has commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. You begin to look at areas of your life. As I begin to look at areas of my life, that seems that they are not multiplying. Begin to open your mouth and decree the word of God over them. I say begin to decree the word of God over them. Because the word of God says in the book of Romans, he said that the word which we preach, the word of faith which we preach, is near you, but that is in your mouth, which is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess the Lord Jesus, if you confess Confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead. You shall be saved. You shall be saved. You say, for, 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 for with the heart, a man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. So I'm here to tell you to begin to open your mouth. You know, there, Pastor Susan was preaching one day, and he said that we Christians, that we're supposed to be talkers, that we're supposed to be talkers, but that we are too quiet. And that is so true. He, she said that, and it stopped with me. Even though I've been thinking about that. But when she said that, it stopped with me. That we are too quiet. Begin to open your mouth. I said, begin to open your mouth. Begin to open your mouth. And begin to decree. Begin to declare. Begin to shout at things. Begin to command things out of your life. Begin to command things out of you. Use your mouth to kill things out of you. Things that need to be killed, kill them. Things that need to be give life, give life to them. I said, use your mouth to give life to them. Them. Use your mouth to release life to them. Begin to use your begin to look at your children. Look at your children and begin to call them blessed. Begin to call them signs and wonder. Look at your child and say to them, You are wonder. You are a sign. You are wonder. Begin to look at your child. That one that seems that have been disobedient, that have been rebellious, that they don't care about things of God. Begin to look at them and decree the word of God over them. Let them think you are crazy. They may think you are crazy. Begin to look at them. Begin to call them signs, wonders, signs, wonders. Begin to look at your body. Look at every part of your body. And begin to call your body healed. Look at your mind. Tell your mind you are healed. Talk to yourself. I say, talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Convince yourself. Convince yourself. 
of the word of God, of the word of God say about you. I tell people uh, last Wednesday in our Bible study, last Wednesday, I told them, I said, me, I, when I drive that, that down the road, I talk to myself. I tell myself, Oh God, that God loves me. I tell, I talk to God all the time. I say, God, I thank you, you love me. I know that you love me. I believe that you love me. I thank you for loving me. I say to myself, Oh God, love me. God, love me. God, love me. You have to convince yourself. Of, convince yourself of this thing. That is why the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah, if you are waiting for somebody to come and tell, say, to say that to you, you may be waiting for a long time. Tell yourself that because the word of God says so. Tell yourself you are healed. Talk to yourself every day. Talk to your body every day. Go fast to your confession. Tell your body I am healed. Tell your body I am healed. Talk to yourself. If you are struggling with marine powers, if you are struggling with spirit wife and sweet husband, tell yourself I am delivered. I am delivered. Even when it doesn't seem so. Even when it doesn't look like it. Even when you seem like like you are still struggling, continue to tell yourself that I am delivered. I am delivered. I am delivered. Look at yourself in the mirror. Tell yourself I'm delivered. In Christ Jesus, I'm delivered. In Christ Jesus, I'm saved. In Christ Jesus, I've been set free. Tell yourself the Son of God has set me free. I am free indeed. I am free indeed. I am free indeed. I am free indeed. I give you a testimony. I'll give you a testimony about myself. After I was saved, I used to smoke weed. I used to smoke marijuana all day long. I smoke before I go to work. I smoke while I'm at work. I smoke by the time I come home. I was high most of the time. But when I got saved, I didn't know any. I was supposed to give it up because I was enjoying it. So I continued smoking. But it come a, it come a time when I begin to listen to the word of God. When I begin to read the word of God, I begin to find out that God doesn't want me putting this things in my body. So I wanted to quit. I wanted to give it up. I wanted to give it up. But I could not. I could not because I was addicted. I was addicted. I struggled. I struggled. I went to the altar for people to lay hands on me. Because, but, I, but, I, but I never quit. I will try. I will quit for two weeks, sometimes for one month. But the urge is still there. The urge is still there. And I'll go to God and I'll cry out to God. I say, God, forgive me. I will never smoke this again. I will never put this in my mouth. I will take the pipe that I used and I throw them away. But two weeks later, I'll go to the garbage looking for the same pipes. Amen. Sometimes somebody will give me a pack of weed. They will give me a bag of weed. I will throw it, uh, you know, I will, I will talk to that way. I say, I don't want to smoke you anymore. You are funny. I will throw it out of the window. But a week later, sometimes I'll be driving down the same road through my window looking for the same weed. And I was saved. I knew I was saved. I was there when I was saved. So I knew it because I was saved in such a powerful way. I knew that. But I could not give this thing up because I was trying in my flesh. One day I stumbled into the word of God that say, he who the son see who the son has set free is free indeed. So what did I start to do? Why I was still smoking, I started confessing the word of God. I was be smoking and I will be saying he who the God, God has set free, he who the son has set free is free indeed. This weed, I am free from you. You will not have done over me. Why I'm reading my Bible? I'll be smoking. I'm reading my Bible at the same time. But then after I smoke, I'll be going like. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. I am free from you. I am free from you. You will not have dominion over me. I am free from you. You will not have dominion over you. You know I continue to confess it. He came one day, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the desire was just gone, just like that. 
wasn't just like that. The desire was not gone. It wasn't just that I was not smoking, but I couldn't even stand the smell of it. The smell of it. I'm here to testify to you how I got the victory. How I got the victory. And when I got that victory, all of a sudden I realized, oh, so that this thing works. So that's how this thing works. Because while I was confessing it, I was even having more urge to smoke more. But I did not give up the confession. I continue to confess. I continue to stand fast in my confession, even while I'm still smoking it. I'm here to tell you, if you are struggling with drinking, if you are struggling with any sin, why you are still doing that? Continue to confess the word of God. Continue to confess the word of God. As it is written, that he who the son has set free is free indeed. If you are struggling with gossiping, if you are struggling with gossiping, if you are struggling with envy, if we are struggling with jealousy, while you are still jealous, where you are still envy, continue to confess, I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. As you continue to confess it, there will come a day when all of a sudden you have no more desire. You have no more desire to, to be jealous. You have no more desire to be envy. You have no more desire to smoke. You will not have no more desire to drink. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how you take possession. Amen. I say that's how you take possession. Amen. That's how you take possession. And I promise God that anything that he delivered me from, that I will not be shy in the presence of his people to say it because he will deliver other people. If he will deliver other people, if he will deliver other people, I will not be afraid. I will not be shy. I don't care what you think about me. I am free now. You may call me export head. You may call me ex marijuana smoker, but I'm free now. That's why I'm not shy. That is why the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 17, he says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe it. To them that believe it. I'm encouraging you today, children of God, believe the word of God, believe the gospel, believe the gospel, believe the gospel, for it is the power, it is the power of God to deliver you, it is the power of God to set you free, it is the power of God to let you walk in holiness, to cause you to walk in holiness, to cause you to walk in righteousness. It is the power. Power of God that will cause you to triumph over every enemy, over every enemy. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. Confess the word of God. Eat the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Because the word of God never fails. The word of God never fails. Pastor Angela said in our first service that if God failed you, and I'm paraphrasing it, you say if God failed you, that means you would be the first person ever that he fails. If the word of God fails you, that means that you will be the first person that the word of God fails. That the word of God fails. Because he never fails. I said the word of God never fails. It is for this purpose that he was manifested. It is for this reason that he was manifested. To destroy the works of Satan. To destroy the works of Satan. In your life, in my life, in my life, he was manifested to destroy Satan and his works in your life, in my life. And I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to encourage you. If you are struggling with anything in your life, the Bible says there is therefore now. No more condemnation. condemnation. No, no more condemnation. No more for you for that is in Christ Jesus. Christian. For you that is Christ Jesus. Who walks after the Spirit? Who walks not after the flesh, but after the Spirit? What does it mean to walk after the Spirit? What does it mean to walk after the Spirit? It simply means to acknowledge the indwelling Christ that is within you, to begin to call on that Christ, to begin to tap into the power of that Christ, and ask Him to live through you. To ask Ask him to be the one that deliver you from whatever you are struggling with. It simply means to stop for, for you, to stop trying, trying to overcome those things in your own power, in your own might, because the Bible says, uh, by strength uh, shall no man be delivered. By strength uh, shall no man be delivered. The Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, it's not by might, it's not by power. Power, but it's by, by my spirit. He says, by my spirit, by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by my spirit, by my spirit. Where is the spirit of God? It's on inside of you. 
He said, it's on inside of you. The Bible said that you are the temple of God, that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Who lives in you? Who lives in you? Why does he come to live in you? Why is he living in you? He is also called a helper. The Holy Spirit is called what? A helper. To help with what? To help you with your evil tendencies, with the sensual appetites of your flesh, with the appetites of your flesh that is contrary to God. That is why he was sent to help you, to give you the power to overcome those things so that God will be glorified in your life, not to condemn you, but to convict you, to convict you that you are righteous, that you are a new creation. He was not sent to convict you. He was sent to convict the world, the world out there of sin. But for you, you have received Jesus. He is sent. He was sent to convict you that you are righteous. To convict you that you are delivered. To convict you that you are healed. To convict you that you are not a spoke anymore. That you are not a doctor anymore. That you are not a fornicator anymore. That you are not a gossip anymore. To convict you of who you are. Of your new identity in Christ Jesus. To convict you of who Christ is in inside of you to convict you that you are a son now, that you are no more a slave, that you are heir of God, that you are the seed of Abraham to convict you. I say he sent to convict you. He sent to convict you that you are the seed of Abraham, that you are the seed of Abraham, that you are a holy child of God. He sent to convict you that you are a holy child of God, that you are a holy child of God, that you are sealed with the Holy Ghost, that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. He came to convict you that you are the redeemed of the Lord. But the Bible also said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the Lord redeemed of the Lord say so. You have to say so. You have to open your mouth and begin to call yourself, I am redeemed of the Lord. You have to call yourself, the healed, the redeemed, the redeemed. You have to call yourself, the sanctified. You have to call yourself, a righteous son. You have to call yourself, a son, an heir of God. You have to call yourself, you have to call yourself, the seed of Abraham. You have to convince yourself, you are so the branch of the vine. You are the branch of the vine. You have been anointed. You have been anointed. You are anointed, you are anointed to walk in holiness. You are anointed to walk in righteousness. You are anointed to walk as an overcomer. You are anointed to live a victorious life. You are anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover. Begin to look at yourself the way God looks at you. Begin to say to your hand, this is the hand of Christ. Begin to say to your feet, this is the feet of Christ. Because the the Bible says the Bible say that we are the bone of his bones and the flesh of his flesh. He said we are the bone of his bones and the flesh of his flesh. Begin to look at yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to your organs. Talk to your organs. Say to your liver. This liver, you are Christ. You belong to Christ. This oven, this womb. This womb, you are Christ. You belong to Christ. You will multiply. You will conceive. You will bear fruit. You will bear fruit. Because the Bible says that the fruit will multiply. The fruit will multiply. Talk to your body. Tell your body what to do. Because God has given you dominion over your own body. Over every physical thing. God has given you dominion over them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Begin to look at the things in your life. You know the book of uh, Genesis that we are reading. In the Genesis verse 1. Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 1, I'm sorry, verse 2. He uh, says, the yeah. earth... Oh, let me start from the beginning. From, let me just start from God. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth with, was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then God says, 
let there be light, and there was light. Hallelujah. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? That you are alive right now. You may look chaotic. Your finances may look chaotic. Your health may look chaotic. Your ministry may look chaotic. It may look like it doesn't have any form. It doesn't have any shape in it. It's like it's not making any sense. You are looking at your children. The way they are acting. It's not what you taught them. It's not the way you brought them up. It's like it's not making any sense. You are looking at your spouse and you are saying, the way they treat me, it doesn't make any sense. That's not the way I treat them. That is not what God promised me. They are looking, looking chaotic. Your marriage is looking chaotic. It's looking like it's without shape. It doesn't have any form. But what does the Bible tell us? He said, but the Spirit of God is hovering. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. It's moving over your marriage. It's moving over your finances. It's moving over your health. It's hovering over your children. The Spirit of the Lord is hovering over your immigration status. It's hovering over your immigration status. It's hovering over your finances. It's hovering over everything that concerns you. It's hovering over your future. It's hovering over your destiny. But God has given you the power. God has given you the power. The power of his word in your mouth. To begin to look at those things and begin to say to them, say to your marriage, let there be light. Say to your children, let there be light. Say to your children, let there be light. Say to your finances, let there be light. Begin to use your mouth because the Bible tells us that he created you in his own image. That means out of your mind, he has given you creative ability. He has given you what? Creative ability. And those creative abilities are what? In your mouth. In your mouth. In your mouth. Pray that God will open your mouth. Pray that God will lose your mouth. Because I understand what you are going through. I understand what some of you are going through. I go through the same thing too. I believe that God put us, all that he has called to be ministers. He put us through the same thing that he put you, so that we can what? Identify with you. So that I will not be sitting over here, telling you, oh, the Bible said this. The Bible said that. Giving you scholarly uh, sermons. Without that, because I haven't gone through what you've gone through. But God put us through all those things. So that when I minister to you, I will minister to you out of experience. I will not just say, toss the word. I will minister to you, because he has toss the word, but I have experienced it myself. Myself. I've gone through it myself. So when I'm talking to you, I'm not talking to you out of my head. I'm talking to you out of my heart. I say, I'm talking to me out of my heart. There are sometimes what I'm preaching to you here today. Sometimes I want to talk. Sometimes I want to proclaim. But you will feel like my mouth is too heavy. You feel like I cannot open my mouth. I'll be thinking what to say. I know what to say. I know what to do. But the power to do it, it just seems like my mouth is too heavy. You don't feel like talking. That is why I encourage you have friends around you that will encourage you, that will lift you up, that will edify you, so that you are, so that when you are in such situation, when you are in those circumstances, they will encourage you, they will speak the word of God to you, they will sharpen you up, they will lighten you up, they will say a word that will lift your spirit up, that will cause you to begin to open your mouth and begin to say the things that God has put in your heart to decree. In Jesus' name. So I've gone through that. I've been to a place where I, I know what to say. But if it just feels like my, somebody, somebody sold my mouth shut. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what am I saying to you? Begin to look at things in your life. When you are releasing the word of God, what are you doing? You are releasing God. Amen. You are literally releasing the hand of God. You are releasing the sword of God. You are releasing the messenger of God. Because the word of God is a messenger of God. Amen. Even though, even though the word of God is Jesus. But remember in the Old Testament, Jesus is also sometimes called the messenger of what? God. The messenger of what? God. So the word of God is a messenger of God. When you are releasing the word of God out of your mouth to every situation, to every circumstance in your life, you are releasing the messenger of God. You are losing the hand of God to battle for you, to do the battle for you. That is why the word of God says that the battle does not belong to you, that it belongs to God, that it belongs to God. But you have to release God because God is a gentleman. If you don't release him, he will just be sitting down there. As you can see it here, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. But he wasn't doing anything until God said, until God said, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God took the Word of God and began to bring about what God declared. Because God has created you in his own image, in his own image, after his own likeness, the Spirit of God is hovering over everything. 
everything that concerns you because you are a child of God, because you are a garden of the Lord, because you are a tree of God, because you belong to God. The Spirit of God is hovering over everything that concerns you, but not until you release the word of God out of your mouth that we begin to act. So I encourage you today, I encourage you today, begin to release the word of God. Begin to release the word of God. Spend more time reading the word, digesting the word, Digesting the word, digesting the word, meditating on the word, until it begins to flow out of you, until you're under the influence of the word of God. Have you ever seen somebody who's drunk, somebody who's under the influence of alcohol? All of a sudden, when you're under the influence of alcohol, all of a sudden, some you know people that used to chase women, they'll begin to look, they'll begin to look at women that when they are under, when they are in their normal circumstances, they will not have the, they will not have the gut to approach that woman. But when they are drunk, all of a sudden. They are loose. They begin to talk to the woman. Or some people they will get drunk. The people that's bigger than them, all of a sudden they begin to look at that person and say, I will kick your butt now. Come and shut up. I'll beat you. Because they're under the influence. The same thing happens to you when you are under the influence of the Holy Ghost. When you're under the influence of the Word of God, you begin to look at things that look like they are giant. All of a sudden they become small. They become like little petites. They become like little petites. Like because why? Because God has taken possession or possession of you. Now you are beginning to see those things the way God sees them. You are beginning to see that sickness the way God sees them. So I encourage you today, let the word of God take possession of you. Take possession of your heart. Take possession of your mind until it begin to flow out of you. Until it begin to flow out of you. And you will never be disappointed. You will never be disappointed. I guarantee you that if you spend enough time seeking the face of God, seeking the word of God, saturating yourself with the word of God, you will never be disappointed. You will never be put to shame. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Huh? What is my conclusion today? It's to tell you that you have won. That you have won. That you are a winner. I say you are a winner. That you are victorious. That in Christ Jesus. That the good news is that in Christ Jesus, you have won the battle. You have already won the battle. Begin to praise him. Just go around praising God. Begin to praise him. Begin to sing to yourself that you are a winner. That you are a winner. Because God says so. Because God says so. That is why I like to sing that song. God say you a winner will never be a loser. God say I'm a winner. I will never be a loser. Jehovah say I'm a winner. I will never be a loser. 